Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and this is our goat barn slash chicken coop that we've been working on. It's 12 by 24. Half of it we already have sided with siding and hardwood that we milled from our property after we built our lake or our pond down there in the distance. And the other half we're gonna get sided in today's video is from some poplar we bought from a local hardwood mill. And we're gonna use that to finish this back side and that side over there. On the previous video, we got this gate made up. We're gonna try to get that disassembled, everything painted, the handle and latch mechanism built today too. It's gonna to be a good time. And there is some frost on everything this morning. It was below freezing last night, but supposed to get up to 70 today. Sun shining, it's supposed to be a gorgeous day. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that backside knocked out so I can get warmed up a little bit. I will say when you order timber like this or lumber like this, you do get mixed widths. They're all kind of different. Now, if you wanna specify widths, you can do that, but of course that's gonna cost you a little bit more. So anything I have that's borrowing my daughter's tape measure because I lost mine, anything I have that's close to four inches, I'm gonna set aside. We'll use that for trim later on around the barn, but everything else is gonna be fair game on the siding. So this board I cut is about two inches shorter than what I actually need my lumber to be. It's kind of like a story pole, but you know, similar. It just keeps me from having to pull tape measure every time, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I just put it where I need it. On this saw, it's one inch from the blade to the edge of the guard. Safety at some point, am I right? And I can just run right down it. Leave it right where it's at. Come down to this end. So I'm one inch over there because I just ran the guard right down the side. And one inch over here. So now my actual board on the bottom is the length I need it. And the reason I'm cutting off both ends, one, the ends aren't typically square. Sometimes they're just whatever happened at the mill, right? And also, some of them have some knots in the end, so it gives me an opportunity to cut some of those imperfections out. So we ended up purchasing the rest of our barn siding from a local sawmill called Phil Aitchens Timber Harvest. If you're familiar with Logger Wade on YouTube, that is the company that Logger Wade has or that his family owns. We ended up going with poplar siding for a few reasons. One, it's just really easy to work with. It takes nails well, it takes screws well, it's easy to cut, it's definitely lighter than oak, so it's easy to sling up on the side of the barn. But the other reason, and the main reason, poplar is naturally resistant to rot and insects, so we figured it'd make perfect barn siding. In fact, in our area, a lot of the older homes Back when they used rough cut lumber to build homes and two by fours were two by fours, they used oak for the structure and they used poplar for the siding on the outside that they would paint. And a lot of that siding is actually still around today. It lasts for a very long time with very little maintenance, which is pretty appealing for whenever we're building the barn that we hope to get a lot of years out of. We are all the way down the back side. Looks great. Love it. We'll look down the side here. Planes out pretty nice. Not bad. Looks really good. So the next step is this end. 
these two openings here on that end, that'll get a sliding door that is that square. That leaves us enough room to get a four-wheeler and a cart through there so we can clean out any bedding or litter or anything like that we need to do. But we can go ahead and do that part. We got a lot of stuff just kind of running wild right now though. So we have trim that up, some miscellaneous blocking we got to get on and we can get that siding on there. You guys know I use a magnetic mount on my GoPros. These little joist hangers with the lips, they work awesome for a magnetic mount when you're doing framing. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. Just hang it right there. I can stick you right on there. And now you're up in the action. Easy peasy. Cool. Love it. These are the pieces we just got cut off. We'll nail those right there so that this is flush with that. Just gotta use it for some blocking for how that siding's gonna fit on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just kinda needs to sit up there for me. You gotta compact the wood around the nail. So I got this off fall piece from that other side when we first ran the angles. I'm just gonna mark the angle. That I got, and I've got the measurement for the uh, short side on it. Let's see if that works. And if it does, just continue that system. What do you say, Boomer? How you doing, sweetheart? Looks good. Just line it up with that. And I already wrote down the long measurement from there to there. And in theory, the long should be the measurement for the short on the next piece. We can carry that on. If it gets too wonky on the bottom, we'll chalk a line and cut it, but I'm not too concerned about it. Let's keep rolling with that and see what it does. That looks really nice. It's a little wonky at the bottom, but there is a piece that goes on the bottom at the end, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm fine with it. We're leaving it. We're going to cut that out. We're going to work our way back here, and we'll fill the middle in. Saws off, perhaps. Oh dear, I'm falling. Oh god. Let's mark where those carriage bolts are at. Or eat a little bit out of that.
So on this one, because we don't have the purlins on top, we can just cut square on the bottom, run them wild somewhat close, chalk a line, and cut it from the top side when we're done for that uh, angle on the roof pitch. That. Can I use the door? Yeah, you can use the door, sure. Absolutely. The door still has a screw in it, it doesn't open. It's still screwed shut though. Michael. <laughs> so that's the last of the siding on there. Of course, we still have to do all the batten strips at some point in the future, but we probably won't do that to the fall, and we'll talk about that later on. But that's the last of the getting all the big siding on there. And it looks pretty daggone good, pretty happy with it. The next thing I want to knock out, in the previous video we did, we built this gate, which turned out really nice, but I still need to paint all this. So we've got to back these screws out, see if we can't slide that piece off there at hole, the wood section of it, and get all those out cleaned up, get those painted. That's next step. Now you tell me how I'm supposed to get that back on there. That was heavier than I thought it'd be.
these are dry enough, I can go ahead and slide them back in. I don't think they're dry enough to hang the door on. But I can go ahead and get them back in there because I've got to run that siding around that bracket. Think those look pretty good on there. Not bad, good enough for what they've got to do. Should be able to go ahead and bring that siding across now and cover those up. And should be able to bring it out right here a little bit too. So in the previous video when I built this barn door, I got a lot of comments saying my diagonal brace was running the wrong way and would not prevent sag in the long term. And I think what that came from was a misunderstanding of what brace was doing what. So this is a good shot with some good angles to kind of explain everything. The metal brace that we're getting ready to put this door back on, this is the brace that's going to help prevent the sag. And it's running the, what, the right way, 100%. From the top if you're looking at the door top right side, down to the hinge. So it transfers that weight down to that hinge and then back to the post. And it will prevent sag as long as that post will support it. The brace I think people were talking about is actually the diagonal brace on the front that I put on that is poplar. Now from this side, you can see that bottom right corner, if you're going into the barn looking at it, is kind of flopping around down to no man's land. So to help combat that thing warping out or that thing coming apart or just to help keep it from flopping around in no man's land, I threw a wood diagonal brace across the front to tie it all together. So with the metal brace on the back side and the wood brace on the front side, we essentially end up with the ultimate strength, which is just a good old fashioned fashion, the words today, a good old fashioned X. And you'll see what I'm talking about whenever we shut the door here in just a little bit that diagonal brace right there. So between the two of them, we should have the ultimate strength on that barn door. Put some primer on to try to get a head start on it. Hmm. 
So we did decide to go ahead and paint it. And I know a lot of people are gonna be upset about that, and that's fine. You guys can be as upset as you wanna be. It's our barn, and this is what we wanna do with it. We can see it from the house, and we want it to look nice, as well as be functional. We've always liked the look of a white barn with black trim and a black roof, so that's what we're going for. Now, the whole reason that I'm doing the primer, like I said, is just to kind of try to help control the bleed through, because this wood will eventually bleed through white paint, especially the knots, especially the rusty nails. And the whole reason I'm only painting one side, now when I say one side, I'm painting all four sides on the outside. I mean inside versus the outside. The whole reason I'm only painting the outside is, and I have no scientific evidence to back this up or no life experience to back this up. I'm just applying a little common sense. My theory is that I'm going to protect the side that is most exposed to the elements and then we'll leave the inside untreated so that there's any moisture in that lumber or any moisture that it tries to absorb over the years. We are in southern Indiana. There's a lot of humidity here. That moisture also has a way back out. I feel like whenever you paint both sides of the board, you trap that moisture in and it just accelerates the rot process. So this is what we're going to try, and hopefully we get a lot of years out of this thing. I think it's going to look really sharp when it's all said and done. Maybe we'll even get a little bit of extra and hang some Edison lights down the gutter board and just really Pinterest this thing up. I don't know. Maybe we're being excessive, but we do want it to look good. A little bit of form, a little bit of function. It's going to go a long way. We'll get this paint on here. And then we're gonna flash flash forward, maybe even fast forward to the following day, and we'll work on the gate handle and latch mechanism. So it is the following morning. Let me get you caught up to speed real quick. You saw the primer we got on, just trying to hit the worst spots. That primer's kind of pricey and I'm not trying to blow the bank on this. Just hitting the worst spots. And I think it turned out pretty daggone good. We didn't do anything on top. Keep in mind, once soffit goes on here, there'll be a strip of wood that goes right across the top of that. So that'll cover all that. And we're not too concerned about it. I was hoping to get a couple coats of paint on today since everything's been going so smoothly but you can see the anti-paint clouds rolling in pretty quick this morning. We have plenty of lumber left to do these doors. Remember, these are gonna be sliding doors that slide all the way open. So we can drive a four-wheeler with a trailer right through there, clean everything out, or if we wanna bring a bunch of feed down, whatever we wanna do, we have access to do that. It'll be right up, wide open down through there. Saw how we got that framed in on there. Same thing on this side. We'll put a board in there. And then that edge sticks out just past where the corner of those boards are meet. That's kind of why it's set up or designed the way it is there. And then a little bit of framing on that gable to finish that siding off. But with the incoming weather, I'm going to switch over from some carpentry work to some metal work, see if we can't get a handle built and a latch mechanism built. I'd like to have that done so that we can actually operate that door. That's going to be the goal to finish this thing off. We'll see what it does today. It's supposed to be, a, there's a chance of scattered showers, but that looks, that looks more organized than I ever am. So I got a couple options over here from the scraps. I've got this piece here. Some flat stock, we could bend a couple 90s in. And I got this here, we could bend some 90s in and maybe heat it up and beat that flat. I've never done anything like that and I don't have an anvil, but that just kind of sounds fun, doesn't it? It's kind of working, but uh, let's be honest. I don't want to put that kind of time into it. Maybe something to get into in the future, though. You know, get the right set up, the right hammers and stuff. Let's go with uh, the flat stock.
Well, it certainly fits the theme, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. These are the pieces we're used for the latch. We're not doing anything fancy with it. Just need something that functions. Brackets are just dry enough. Let's see if we can try this real quick. So I've got to put this board on for temporary purposes. When it's all said and done, there'll be a strip that comes down here, but we don't have all that right now. So this is going to go right here, and we'll just put that on until we get the rest of the barn done, obviously. impact. Beautiful. Yep. I don't think we have to worry about that handle breaking. That's, that's good, you know. One less thing. One less thing to worry about. All right, so I think I've got a plan. I'll clean this little edge up just a little bit. You can see I kind of chiseled out an area in here for a mechanism to sit. Honestly, it doesn't look terrible the way it sits down. Not getting too crazy with it. Let's go right about there. Then we're going to put a washer here. Mechanism. Me how do you spell that? Mecha mechanism? Mechanism? Yeah. Right here. The odds that stays where it needs to, huh? That would just flawless. Yeah, huh? And then we've got uh, a neoprene nut to put on there. There's all kinds of wood dust on there right now, isn't there? Yeah. So I'm just going to put a little pressure on it. I'd say right like that's pretty good. That's a little too much. Oh, yeah. Not bad. If we moved it closer, that would get rid of quite a bit of that play. And that fix our other problem too. Let's see how that won't work. So we may tweak that, but it's not bad. We'll use it for a little bit. If we want to change it, we can change it. That's the beauty of it. But it's not bad, you know. It holds it. It'd take a lot of force to break it. It's got a little wiggle to it, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It'll be fine, and you can manipulate it from the inside if you push down right there. But it would not take much. If I weld it on a little rod that you could just 
you know, to uh, manipulate that action. It works good enough for now. We still have quite a bit more work to do on the barn. So if we want to change it, we can always change it. It's not too big of a deal. That's kind of the fun of making your own stuff and fabricating. Use it for a while. If you don't like it, give it a few tweaks and we'll make it work right. But it does what it's supposed to. Hold the door closed. <laughs> a few people did ask as far as putting critters on the outside. Well, a lot of people do around here and what we've done on our other chicken coop the one that we're replacing is you take galvanized woven wire, you come up about six inches, you run that down, you run it out, and then you bury it. And that way stuff can't dig underneath to get under it. And that works pretty good. And keep in mind there's gonna be a board that goes across the bottom. So whatever comes up here wire-wise will get covered up by that board and hold it really secure. So that'll keep the critters from digging underneath. We still have some detail work here we could work on. Yeah, some detail work up there we could work on. But I think overall, pretty good progress for one sunny day and half a drizzly day. I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with it indeed. And we do have all the paint, so we could go ahead and do the doors, trim, detail work, and paint everything too. We could go ahead and do that. We might do that. I don't know. I don't know. It just depends. I got to pick up that impact. What mood I'm in. Honestly, we've got so many projects going. I can kind of just pick and choose what I want to work on. And I enjoy that. Just like I enjoy you guys watching. And I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. I hope you're enjoying all the projects that we're getting into. As always, thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. I don't know what it is, but I'll be there and I'll see you guys there when we get there. Okay.